three, two, one. What's up, you guys? So this is a video that had been requested a while back. Obviously, the most popular video I have on this whole channel is my uh, repair of the original Xbox here. And I, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. I think a lot of people have, didn't mean to hit the camera like that. I think a lot of people have seen it by now. If your Xbox tray is stuck, there's a little thing right there. You stick a needle in it or a paper clip or whatever and pops the tray right out. But I had had some requests for a video um, tearing the Xbox down, taking it apart, and cleaning it up. And that was something that I had, uh, I had looked to do for a while. So uh, we're kind of set up for that now. And I'm just going to run down real quick. I don't have a ton of things here as far as cleanup goes. Um, I, as you can see, this one's pretty dirty. This is not the same one that we repaired the disc tray on. This is a different one. But uh, things that I have that you will need, uh, this is a, you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think. Well, maybe you can. This is a Torx uh, T15 uh, screwdriver. You could very easily use um, a drill bit and a, a manual or an automatic driver. Uh, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, I also have close by just in case because to be quite honest, I don't remember exactly what we're going to find on the inside, but um, I, I've kind of got a catch-all from Stan Lee for uh, basically any size bit or any size screw that we find in there that's either Phillips or flathead or apparently even a mini crowbar. Yeah, a tack puller. <laughs> Who knew? Or if we need to punch a hole in something, there's an awl there. Um, also, for cleaning purposes, Armor All cleaning wipes, just like what you would use uh, on your car. And then when we're done, we're going to wipe it down with a protectant wipe. Now, um, they do leave a residue, and don't think that you're coming away scot-free uh, if you use them. But the protectant wipes, in my opinion, just in my opinion, but in my opinion, they do a nice job. Of, of keeping these consoles where all you need to do is just wipe them down uh, regularly and uh, when you wipe them down you know a lot of times if I wipe them down all I'm doing is dusting they're not dirty like this I'll just use one of those uh, protectant wipes and just wipe the whole thing down uh, it cleans it up and these things they say uh, they preserve the cars rich look I would say that in this case they um, keep your console from from fading you ever notice how the longer you have a console the less um, crisp the look is I guess the less shine and more matte uh, it kind of prevents that and then the other thing you should have this anytime you're disassembling a console or a computer or anything is uh, ultra duster or <laughs> this is just what Walmart had um, it says multi-purpose duster it's canned air <laughs> scared the crap out of the cat there didn't we okay so um, when you're going to do this, obviously, you can see back here. Well, you can kind of see back there. There are no cords plugged into the system. Uh, that's pretty crucial. Do not have your Xbox plugged in while you're disassembling it. And you're just going to flip it over. And I thought it had all the feet on it. I was wrong. Uh, we've got one already off. But um, you could do this with like a knife or something like that. Get up under there. I just do it. I have pretty decent fingernails so just uh, pry away these feet uh, you can put them back on and on the off chance that all the residue uh, the the sticky part has worn off you just um, put some double sided tape on the console and then stick the foot back on I actually don't care one way or the other since I was already missing one so I may not put these back on um, but those, when you do that, you're uncovering the uh, the screw holes, as you can see, and there's one more that's going to be hidden. So I'll show you that uh, in a few minutes. And as you can see, these are really long screws with a short thread on them. There's not a lot of threading to it. It's just a really long shaft, and that's because it goes through everything in the Xbox and connects up at the top. Now that we've got those four out, um, you want to kind of feel around because, to be quite honest, there we go. I can never remember exactly where it is, uh, but it's right there under the 
and I should be able to remember, it's under the uh, You'll Get Shocked logo, the electricity logo, and you just punch right through it. See how I did that? Just punch through, and it'll screw right out. Now, yes, I know we're tearing up the label. Well, which would you rather have? A perfect label or a clean console? So, we've got that done. We'll flip it back over. And the top should just, I say should, lift right off. Unless I miss something. I missed one. So there are six screws in total. It's always nice when you go to do something like this on the internet and you screw it up. That does explain why there was so much resistance. Alright, so here's one thing to look at when you're uh, cleaning one up. If you come in here, and this is a heat shield by the way, if you come in here and this is fairly clean, that's a good sign. You can see mine still reflects light. It's fairly clean. Um, in fact, it was fairly cool in there. You can see it fogging up because it's really humid in my space down here. Now, down inside, we got a little bit of dust. That's not necessarily unexpected. So, next, you can see there's a ribbon cable right here. You're going to pull that loose and get it up out of the way and you can kind of see down in the box a little better and I'll flip this up now I'm not going to take this whole thing apart because I don't have a T10 Torx uh, head with me right now but if you were doing that there's a screw right here a T10 and there is a uh, another screw um, it's either a T10 or a T15 down in here and on this corner right here. Now, each of those have to come out before you can remove the optical drive. I'll move this back over here. Uh, once you take those out, you can remove the optical drive and uh, the, disc, the tray for the hard drive here. You can't do that without uh, taking this one out and the two, there's one right there oh I'm sorry it's on the front corner it's right down in there and one right there you can see that so that's how you would get the optical drive apart uh, and get all this out so let's say you needed to and I've done that in the past I'm not gonna do that here today but let's say you needed to get the the hard drive out you were gonna upgrade the hard drive you want a bigger hard drive because you were modding it okay well that's great good for you but you just pull the ribbon cable here loose and then this uh, uh, the power cable here pull those loose and once you've got this tray out pop the drive out and uh, uh, swap the new one in uh, obviously you would also want to copy your OS or if you're putting you know Windows or something like that on it, Linux whatever uh, you can do that um, now as far as the optical drives go I know these things are starting to wear out I cannot tell you one way or the other about trying to replace them. From my understanding, which is somewhat limited, but from my understanding of these systems, Microsoft basically took a mid-grade gaming computer for, what was it, 2000? And stuffed it inside of this. Now, you can see down in here behind the... Um, the cables, I mean, it's just a motherboard down in there. Um, I would not begin to tell you, though, what kind of optical drive to stick in it. Now, what I am going to do, and I know this is kind of a lame teardown, but I just am not in the mood to, to go through all of this. But you can kind of see how it's done. So six screws on the outside, and then, uh, and then the handful here to take, it, uh, take this tray. Th there's actually you can see all this black plastic around the hard drive um, that's a tray that this is set in so that comes out and the optical drive come out and that's how you get to the uh, uh, the motherboard down there but uh, the gist of it is exposed at this point 
and you can kind of see what we're doing. So uh, what I would do next, whether I'm tearing it all the way out or I'm just doing what I've done here. I, <laughs> the cat really does not like this. <laughs> She's backing off the table. Um, I would just come in here and blow all this garbage out. And you can see some of it flying out of here. My big focus is what you saw there. Lord knows what that's going to sound like. But I want to get the um, cooling fan, uh, make sure it's good and blown off. And then the ports, the um, ports on the back and the sides where, uh, where it's going to draw the air in. So you kind of get the idea. You can tell I'm holding it at an angle. I kind of knew going in that I wasn't dealing with too dirty of a system. So I wasn't overly worried. Um, what I was worried about is the outside. And I'm going to show you what I do with that next. So we'll set the guts off to the side. And we'll pull this lid over here. Now this lid, you can see it's pretty dirty. So we'll get some of these wipes and you know in the case of uh, these slots on the side these slots are the uh, the grooves here are the worst part of trying to deal with an original Xbox but if you kind of blow over them you can blow some of that out now it's not coming out of this one but you get the gist and in the case of this one, because of how dirty it is down in those grooves, um, I can tell you what I may, might do is, and, and you would want to do this if you go to a flea market or something like that, and you get a really dirty console, uh, the plastic parts, and that includes the base over there, you can disassemble this console, and all you got to do, take the screws out and just pay attention. Do like I'm doing, film it. Or, uh, or take photos as you go, but take the rest of the screws out and disassemble it so that you've got the base separate from the guts. And any of this plastic, as long as you let it dry first, you can soak this thing in soapy water or uh, bleach or whatever you want to put it in. Just make sure that it's dried off before you, uh, before you put the system back together or put any electronics in it. Um, you know, if you want to just put the shells together, then it can be as wet as you want it to be. But uh, once you go and um, put the hardware in it, you need it to be dried off. So otherwise, I've done it with Nintendos before. What you get an NES console, those things can be so filthy because they've been around for years. People smoke around them because in the 80s, everybody smoked. You had your kids come out of the womb smoking, I think. And so you... <laughs> You find a lot of those with um, smoke discoloration and that sort of thing. Um, so I, I've i soaked several NES consoles in um, soapy water. Now you can see most of this is coming off. I'm, I'm not going to be able, I don't think, to get in this small groove down in between the uh, X there. But most of this is uh, is coming off pretty easy. The Xbox was fairly detailed when you really think about it. I know the PS2 had those little um, grooves on its sides. They use those to hide the grill. You, know, you can see right there. You can see through that part. Well, now it just looks like a design aspect when you look at the, the lid, right? But it actually has some functionality. So, there's that. And all of this comes off. Now, as you can see, this thing's filthy. It's starting to match the tablecloth here. But, get it cleaned up. And, once you get it done, it just goes back together uh, the same way it came apart. In this case, because I didn't take any of the innards out of it, you just simply um, 
slide the top back on, make sure it snaps back in place, and then put those six screws back in. And like I said, one of the best things that I learned early on in disassembling consoles like this is if you're not sure yourself, you um, take pictures as you go. And don't be worried about eating up cell phone memory or camera memory. Take as many pictures as you need to feel comfortable putting it back together. Now there are lots of shops that will do what I'm doing for you, but if you're like me, and you'd rather do it yourself, that's what I encourage, is figure out how to do it yourself, because right now retro, including Xbox, is pretty, uh, pretty in vogue. But when the retro bubble goes away, which I'm sure it will, there's going to be lots of people with consoles that don't know um, how to fix them, and there's going to be fewer and fewer places to fix them. Plus, as we go generation upon generation, I mean, think about it. How many people do you know that could repair your Odyssey 2600 right now? Sure, there's a retro shop around that could repair one of these or clean it up or whatever, but how many could fix your 2600? So figuring it out for yourself ensures that your collection can be repaired uh, even if nobody else is around to do it for you. So I think that's a, a big time bonus to have that knowledge firsthand. All right, so we got that cleaned up. We're gonna let that dry, and I'm gonna throw that wipe away, and we'll get another one out here to do the the base. Now with the base or the guts, you have to be a little more careful because um, I mean you do have some hardware over here, but as long as you don't go digging around in there. You should be all right. Now I'm just wiping the face down, uh, trying to get the dust out of the controller ports. These things are like a safe haven for grungy dust. So is this logo. Eject button. And then underneath here. And these are... There, let me flip that up. These are... Um, uh, air, not ducks, but you know, air returns as well. So they're going to collect dust. I said this the other day on Facebook. <laughs> I said, you know, you would think by now we would have come up with a system for computers where the vents were not on the bottom. Same thing goes for gaming consoles. Like, what the heck were they thinking putting the heat vent? or the heat, the cooling intake on the bottom. Now I'm going to wipe this down. You can see it's starting to get a little rust here, which means this thing's been exposed to who knows. If people were like me and they had pets, we could be talking about cat pee. <laughs> we could be talking about um, toddler drool. I mean, there's any number of things. Plus, a lot of these consoles were owned by stupid kids. I have a great story. My stepsister's daughter, my niece, um, dumped Juicy Juice, or some equivalency, in the bottom of my PS3. I had one of the um, first model PS3s that were backwards compatible. And, of course, those are the hot ticket ones now. SD card slots and all that. And they were, um, they were nice. I liked mine quite a bit. But it got the Juicy Juice treatment, so I had to replace it. Good grief, I'm being rough on this tablecloth. This was a new cloth tonight. Uh, let's see. So we've wiped the console out. And... We've let the top here dry, and I'm, I'm not going to show the reassembly because I am going to let these parts uh, kind of condition, I don't know, dry off. And you can see this one's still a little damp, but I'm getting the protectant wipe, 
and we're just gonna give this a good rub down and again it's difficult to get into some of these little grooves and nooks and crannies but it really does help um, you can treat this kind of like you would a Super Nintendo uh, where you take and, and wrap a credit card around the cloth and put it down in the slots you can do that run it down in these grooves um, I kind of run it put my fingernail down in it and run it run it down that way um, just kinda groove it up against there make sure you get any excess uh, liquid out because these things do have a good amount of liquid in them but you can see I hope I know I'm kinda looking at the camera feed uh, it looks like you can tell pretty well the difference that it makes I mean obviously it gives it that wet look but even wiping it with the protectant you can tell a difference in uh, the way it was before when it was just kind of damp versus now also there may be a day that I pop this gem off there's a pretty cool mod you can do if you're familiar with console modding at all there's a, a pretty cool mod you can do where you um, take the gem off and you dremel out a hole and put an LED light inside and it really really makes the console look sharp you um, you can clean up the back and things like that it's, it's a pretty neat mod might do that one day alright so um, I've kind of mopped this top off and you can see there's uh, there's some of the protectant down in there and I'll go back and clean that off with a old t-shirt or a paper towel or something but uh, for the most part this is pretty much what I would do if I were cleaning an old console up now uh, again if I was really worried about the condition of that uh, Xbox if it had been really dirty in my mind on the inside I would have done a little bit more to kind of cleanse it but it's not that dirty on the inside it's a little dusty but it's not dirty and so I'm not that overly worried about it uh, so I will kind of let the innards go but um, you know maybe later on down the line there's some goop in here maybe later on down the line I'll completely tear one apart but this is just kind of a a basic cleaning if I was gonna uh, if I had picked this up at a flea market or something like that and I was going to clean it up, this is what I would do. Um, I had had some people ask about that. So uh, hopefully this answers any questions you have. Or if you have more questions, if this makes you go, now, wait a minute, why did you do this or why did you do that? Um, let me know in the comments below. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do some more of these because I'm moving again. And a, a lot of my consoles have just been in storage for the last, I don't know, year, two years. So as I move, I'm going to be taking them uh, apart and cleaning them up to put them back out on display. And I want them to, uh, to look really good. I've taken pretty good care of my consoles most of the time. So uh, you're going to see a lot of cleaning like this and uh, and disassembly to get the dust and things like that out so uh, we'll be doing more of that uh, in upcoming videos but uh, like subscribe and certainly on this video comment below with any questions you have let me know if there's a certain console you'd like to see taken apart or if this uh, if this helped you in any way uh, and I'll see you guys next time be sure you check out the video of Daniel and I playing uh, Super Mario World for the 25th anniversary of the Super Nintendo. Check that out. Uh, I'll link it down below, and we'll see you guys next time.